Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the West Lindsay series. This is one of the nine districts of Lincolnshire and one of the county's most rural. It has 128 civil parishes. Let's see which one this episode's all about. Okay, today in West Lindsay, I've got a nice little village for you. This is an estate village. It's part of the Brocklesby estate, but we're not in Brocklesby. That'll get an episode all by itself. This is Great Limber. <laughs> West Lindsay series is sponsored by Gains Recycles 01427 617 752. For all your cycling needs, this is your one stop shop. Located at 20 Ropery Road or online at gainsrecycles.com. There's a link in the description. Gains Recycles, ask for Trevor Halstead. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Today, we're looking at Great Limber, a village associated with the Brocklesby estate and with the Earl of Yarborough. We're driving into the village here from Grasby. I decided to do this mainly because the road has a few things of note along it, but Great Limber is generally speaking very linear in its layout. Our walk will focus mainly on the village core. As such, keep your eyes on the right of the screen as we drive in because we pass two religious buildings, both of which are not on the main walking route. One of them is the Wesleyan Methodist Chapel, which was built here in 1841. Great Limber is sometimes known as Limber Magna. It's both a village and a civil parish. It's also sometimes referred to as just Limber. That's because as well as Great Limber, there's also Little Limber, which is not within Great Limber's parish boundaries. It lies 10 miles east of Brig and 10 miles west of Grimsby. Brocklesby Parish is to the north and Clixby Parish is to the south. Much of the village is part of a conservation area. Quite a good one. Yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah. Fair selection. Good that. That red telephone box is a listed building, by the way. I wonder if they all are. Anyway, right off the bat, we have an information board. That was one of the nuggets of information upon it. Next to this is a bus shelter, but it appears this one is no longer in use. Never fear though, even if it's not, you can still get to Great Limber via bus. We'll see where the buses stop later. There's a huge pond in the centre and many houses in Great Limber are made from a pale yellow coloured brick. The bricks came from Great Limber's former brickyard, hence this street's name. Opposite the pond is the old priest's house, a thatched property which was only rethatched last year. Grade 2 listed, it's the oldest surviving secular building in the village. Here's another board, this one telling us all about the village pond and its surroundings. These boards form part of something called the Great Limber Village Trail. Even though this is a small place, despite the name, this has a few communal buildings. As such, on the other side of Church Lane, we've got Great Limber Village Hall. Nikki spotted the parish notice board outside the village hall and Great Limber is officially done. 
Also here is Keith Housen's joinery, based at Priest's House Farm. Occupying 3,000 square feet of workshop space, this was established in 1989, manufacturing furniture and other joinery items. Now let's focus on the pond. This was formed some 100 years ago and was renovated in 2019. Most villagers would have obtained water from the village pond before it was available on tap. That said, there was also a well in Great Limber, but it was out to the west at Pimlico Farm. Check out this neat little carving on this tree stump. We thought it was a young frog with its tadpole tail. No longer a water supply, the pond is now used primarily by the local wildlife, and there's a nice little board here telling you what you'll find in it. Way too many to list, but that's an excuse for you to come here and find out, right? One thing you won't find in it is fish, and as such, there's no fishing allowed here. The one good thing I find about estate villages is they've got plenty of information on boards around the place, even if they are a little, shall we say, higher class than the average village. Great Limber's Grade 1 listed Anglican church is dedicated to St Peter. It's built in both the Norman and decorated styles with a low crenellated west tower with three bells. The lick gate to the churchyard was built in 1912 in memory of local man John Mounsell Richardson, an MP and steeplechase jockey who won two Grand Nationals as a rider in the 1870s. The church was partly restored in 1873. Its chancel is mostly Victorian, although its arch is 13th century, as is the font. An 1890 stained glass window in the North Isle is by Kemp. Nicky's found somebody with a dog again. At the end of the churchyard we have a scheduled monument. In the 12th century, the Knights Templar held a manor in Great Limber, which they let to secular tenants. When the order was dissolved in the 14th century, the estate passed to the Knights Hospitallers, a medieval and early modern Catholic military order. The site is a large rectangle, and supposedly the earthworks here are the remains of the Knights Hospitallers' camera, where the main house, gardens, outbuilding and chapel were located. A gap in the hedge alongside the camera gives us access to the A18. This is the high street, and there's plenty of buildings along here of note. Most have tall chimneys with spiral decorations. The high street has the three oldest vernacular buildings in the village. Town End House used to be both an abattoir and a butcher's shop in times past. Got a care home here in Great Limit. Little Brocklesby House care home. And it's over there somewhere. Perhaps the most striking building on the high street is this barn on the corner of Church Lane. This is the barn at the Grade 2 listed vicarage. An unusual design, it has openings in the shape of a cross. There's a second building like this too out to the west of the village. Once again, much like the well, that's at Pimlico Farm with its hay barn mirroring this design. Here's the bus stop. If you want to catch a bus out here to Great Limber, the service you need is the 53C from Brig or Caister, but it's a call connect service, not a regular one. Next, we pass a permissive footpath which runs through a wood. I was originally going to use it, but you can't anymore as the Brocklesby estate have closed it thanks to antisocial behaviour. It runs to the gigantic Brocklesby Mausoleum. It commemorates Sophia of Frere, the wife of the first Earl of Yarborough, who died in 1786. The mausoleum stands on a mound behind these trees. That mound is also a Roman tumulus. Not nearly as grand as the mausoleum, there was something else to have a look at here. This is not a water pump, it's a tap. There was one for every five houses. So uh, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that I can't get to the mausoleum, but it's the same as always, isn't it? There's always one individual or a group of people that spoil it for everybody else. Now, even though those signs say temporarily closed, I'm led to believe it is actually permanently closed, the Woodland Walk up to the mausoleum, which is a little bit yeah, it's on there. Yeah, but um, what can you do? You can't do anything about it. If it's closed, it's closed. Now we're almost back where we began and we're at the new inn. This has been a public house for almost 200 years, having been built in 1840. The main entrance is around the back these days. Nicky's architectural side was taken by these gate piers for some reason, so we crossed the road. I don't believe the house these belong to is anything of note, but I'm happy to stand corrected. Great Limber is a bit of an anomaly when compared to the other local villages we've seen lately, in that it has a shop. I suspect though being located on a major road encourages passing trade. 
And that's it folks, or at least it is on foot, I've taken you around Great Limber. By the way, the name Great Limber literally means Lime Tree Hill. Lime trees in Lincolnshire, who'd have thought it? Okay, so that's a nice little walk around Great Limber. You guys need a picture bit now, and that's coming very shortly. To finish this video off in a few moments, I'll be driving up the A18 along that road to catch the remaining part of Great Limber as we head out of West Lindsay and into North Lincolnshire. Picture bit time. So to finish, this is a nice drive up the A18 towards the boundary with North Lincolnshire and to the nearest village, which is Kermington. On the right as we head for the border is Little Limber, which belongs to the parish of Brocklesby. Little Limber is inaccessible as it lies on a private road on the Brocklesby estate. At the time of Doomsday, Little Limber had just eight households, putting it in the smallest 40% of settlements, and it was listed under three owners. It's not much larger than that now, to be honest. The A18, by the way, links Great Limber not only to Kermington but also the M180 at Junction 5. Brocklesby is now the only one left to cover in the far northeast of the district, but for now, this run up here is over. Next time, we'll be in a different part of West Lindsay. So until then, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the parish of Great Limber, and I'm out. <laughs>